All right, here's where it all begins. Our author, Jalal, is looking for the right journal for his article. And maybe he's found your journal listed in the DOAJ. Maybe he's seen some of your articles being shared by colleagues on Twitter. He's come to the website, read over the focus and scope statement, your copyright policy and your author guidelines, and now he's ready to submit. So let's watch what he does. He's got a couple of choices. When he was on the About section, he may have seen a link to submissions, or perhaps more prominently over on the sidebar, the Make a Submission button. Let's click on that. And right away, he can see that he needs to log in or register to make a submission. So let's follow him through there. Now you can see a button right at the top to create or connect with your ORCID. So if Jalal already had an ORCID account or wanted to sign up for one, he could click that button put in his ORCID identification, and his profile information would be automatically filled in, in the o on the OJS registration page. But let's just focus on what's here. So we will fill this in with his information. First name, last name, affiliation, and his country, let's say, United States, and then an email, I'll just make one up here, a username, a password, repeat it. And those are all the information fields he needs to fill in. He does have one more choice. Would he be willing to review other submissions for this journal? We could say yes. And he could put in his interests here. Maybe he's interested in scholarly publishing, open access, source software. You get the idea. Checks a button that he's not a robot. That goes through and the register button. And that's it. We've tried to make the registration process a lot simpler in OJS3 um, so authors can get up and running very quickly. Now that he's registered, he can go ahead and make a new submission. This automatically takes him to the five-step process. Again, for those of you familiar with OJS2, this looks um, a little bit the same, but again, we've tried to make some improvements here. First of all, he can read the copyright statement and agree to it. Select the section that would best fit his article and agree to all of the points on the submission checklist. And if you had any comments to the editor, he could make them here. And there's also a privacy statement just assuring him that his personal information won't be reused in any way. Save and continue. On to step two to upload the submission. Right away, he'll be asked to select an article component. And that might not be immediately obvious what it is, but hopefully once he chooses the, down, the drop down, he'll see that there's a number of options. Article text, research instrument, research materials, research results, and so on. We just want to do the text and let's now upload the Word document. You can see that it's a drag and drop or also to click the button to upload the file. You can grab that from here and there we go. Opportunity to review the details. This is an editable field, but that's fine. We can just leave it as is. If he had another file, he could click on this and upload something like an image, or if there was a data set in an Excel spreadsheet, all of those kinds of information can be uploaded here. We'll keep it simple though, we'll just keep it to the one Word document and save and continue. We can fill in the prefix because there is one.
And if there's a subtitle that can continue down below, that'll be displayed after a call. And that's done. And then we can put in an abstract. Let's just paste one in there quickly. And then we can see he's listed as one of the contributors if he has co-authors. We can add a contributor by just clicking on that link. And you can fill in that information. Including an email address and a country. And you can see there are additional user details, but those aren't required. But he does need to indicate whether she's an author or a translator, whether she's the principal contact, we'll leave Jalal as the principal, and whether to include her in any lists that display the author names. And save. Good, now they're both there. In terms of metadata, Choose a few there, just typing them in and pressing enter creates these keywords and save and continue. Step four is just confirming that you're happy with everything. I could always go backwards and make some changes, but it looks good. Let's finish the submission. Am I sure? Absolutely. And step five is just the next steps. Uh, thank you for submitting to the Journal of Public Knowledge. An email has automatically been sent out from the editor thanking the author for making the submission, and the editor has also received an email notification letting him know that there's a new submission ready to be reviewed. And that's it. With these five simple steps, the author has been able to upload his submission to the journal and is ready to hear back from him. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.